Recent press reports indicated that a U.S. government mission named Zuma may have either failed in orbit or the launch could have been unsuccessful. I do not want to discuss anything classified in an open session. The circumstances surrounding this mission do have a direct impact on NASA and this committee's jurisdiction and oversight responsibilities. For instance, the launch vehicle used for the mission was developed with substantial NASA funding. The rocket is also scheduled to launch the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite mission in March. More importantly, the rocket will be used in the commercial crew program that we are discussing today. Knowing the operational history of the system that NASA will put people on is an issue of life and death, literally. Similarly, the Zuma spacecraft was reportedly built by Northrop Grumman, who is building a $9 million James Webb Space Telescope for NASA. Understanding Northrop Grumman's work is clearly important to NASA and the committee. So I'd like to uh, address the first question to you, Dr. Koenigsman. Thank you for committing to provide an unclassified briefing on the Zuma, commission, on the Zuma mission. If the committee needs uh, more information, will SpaceX provide this committee with a briefing on this mission in a classified setting? Well, thank you for your question. Um, I want to point out on the on the Zuma mission that we um, we relayed the information that um, Falcon 9 performed as specified, and um, and uh, it actually performed very well as specified, um, and that we are um, picking up the launches by the uh, by the end of the month um, as we planned um, all the time. Um, regarding a briefing, um, we will go through the proper channels and uh, follow the protocol. As you uh, pointed out, we can't uh, talk any details in this particular setting. Okay, thank you. Uh, and to uh, Mr. Gerstenmeyer, does anyone at NASA know the details of the Zuma mission? We do not know the details of the mission, uh, per se, but we've been informed by others that if there's any mishap investigation or any other activities in uh, that are involved, we will be appropriately involved in that activity. Okay. Well, why would NASA place astronauts on systems without knowing the system's full operational heritage? And it brings to mind President Reagan's use of the, of the Russian proverb, trust but verify. Again, we will know uh, if there's a, if this is declared a mishap and we understand that it's a mishap, NASA will be informed and we will have appropriate personnel participate gotcha. in those mishap activities. Okay, thank you. Following the explosion of the SpaceX rocket and the Amos 6 spacecraft on the launch pad, SpaceX was not able to determine a single most probable cause of the event. Instead, identifying several credible causes related to the composite overwrap pressure uh, vessel, or COPV, helium tank. SpaceX modified its operations to prevent similar events going forward, but still doesn't know the exact cause. Uh, the ASAP report states, the panel considers this to be the most critical step in clearing the COPV for human spaceflight as it allows NASA and SpaceX to identify the credible failure mechanisms, hazard scenarios, and controls, as well as understand the safety margins on the system. The report goes on to state, in our opinion, adequate understanding of the COPV behavior and cryogenic oxygen is an absolute essential precursor to potential certification for human spaceflight. Dr. Sanders, how many launches with a stable configuration uh, should NASA require SpaceX and Boeing to achieve before certification? That's a very difficult question. Thank you. <laughs> um, right now, uh, I believe NASA is, is uh, planning to require seven um, launches with that configuration, and we believe that's an appropriate number. Um, there's um, some, some statistical evidence that Mr. Gerstermeyer could probably talk to a little bit better than I can on um, why that is a, a reasonable number. Um, it, it is not a, a totally random number. It is an, a number that's um, predicated on having more than a few and having, um, but having a, a time frame in, in which you can actually accomplish those and still get on with certification um, and make the right risk-risk decision on flying. 
Okay, thank you very much. And Mr. Gerstenmeyer, will NASA certify SpaceX to carry NASA astronauts without knowing the root cause of the Amos 9 failure? And will NASA allow SpaceX to use the load and go procedure for either commercial crew or the uncrewed missions? Again, we, we may not ever know the exact root cause of the failure that was associated with Amos, but we're a, we have a very intensive test program in cooperation with SpaceX and NASA doing some testing to identify the contributing uh, causes or potential causes of that failure. SpaceX is doing a redesign of the composite overwrap pressure vessel system, and Hans can talk to you about the details of that. We're participating in that. We will do the testing. We will understand the most likely contributors, and we will remove those from the failure uh, chain and make sure that we're really ready and safe to go fly and the system is ready for crew before we put them on board. In terms of the uh, so-called load and go, we're in the process of looking at the best time to put the crew on the vehicle. We'll take into account the hazards associated with the specific vehicle designs, um, how much propellant is being actively loaded, what systems are, are operating, what hazards are associated with those activities, and we will find the appropriate time, along with the contractors, to put crew on this particular vehicle design that is most appropriate for the lowest risk to our crews and overall lowest risk to the, or gives us the highest probability of mission success. And we're in the process of working with both providers to determine the appropriate time to put crew on the vehicles. Excellent. Thank you very much. My time has expired.